Right guys, what we've done, I've just temporarily mounted the scale to the backing plate just because I, I don't have enough hands to hold everything. We've sat that up against the casting. We know as before with, with the other two scales, fortunately these, these scales are marked so I've got a centre dot on the reader I centred it on the scale so I know I've got that 8-9 millimetres of spare travel at this end and basically I've set, I've taken it off now but I've set this this rule up with a square and had it roughly clamped to the to the boss that I've put on so that I, I knew my rule was square this way and I basically I sighted down to the centre dot that's on the on the reader off the center of that boss and I've used a sharpie marker to put a mark at, at each end of the scale or each end of the backing plate rather on there so now I'm going to strip this back down we'll pop the scale back up where I can access the holes sorry not the scale the backing plate back up where I can access the holes we'll mark the two holes out based on these two marks and we'll get the holes drilled and tapped into the into the base casting to hold the backing plate in, in, in the right place. So that's the next job. Alright guys, we've got that on, so we tap the two holes out, we've fitted the backing plate, we've put some grub screws in, top and bottom in the holes that I put in, and we've spent about an hour and a half winding the Y axis backwards and forwards. So it's just as well I didn't film that because you'd have all fallen well asleep. So we've got that within, I'm, I'm reading about a thou and a half on the top. I'm reading on this front face about the same. I've got about a thou and a half across it, but it's about zero and zero at each end with some variants in between. And up and down, I've got negligible. I've got hardly anything that I can really detect. So that's about as good as I'm going to get that. Um, it's it's locked up tight so the next job now is to get the scale fitted to that and then start looking at the bridge pieces that are going to go between the spacer that I've made there and fitted down to the down to the reader so I'll bring you back when we're looking at how we're going to do that so we've got the the scale fitted now and I've clocked this front face and I've got about a thou best I can measure across the front and I'll just show you just one of the measurements hopefully you can see the clock there we need to ignore the bit where the sticker is in the middle so I'm at the back of the y-axis at the minute and we're going to bring the y-axis forward so we're on zero at that end just about to go onto the sticker there so just ignore that reading come back off the sticker about now we're about two thou in the middle back to a thou so end to end I've got about a thou and there's a, there's a dip of a thou in the middle potentially so at worst I'm um, a thou end to end um, and, and then there's a bit more in the middle there so I'm fairly pleased with that I'm not I'm not gonna mess around with that I think that's that's within the spec uh, that came with the instructions so we're gonna leave that well alone and the next thing now is to work out how we're gonna attach the bridge to the reader head so I've cut two more bits of aluminium this bit will be the bit that fits to the underside of the reader and this bit is basically the bridge piece that will go down to that from the spacer sort of diameter piece that I've already fitted so first job with these we'll get them in the vise get them squared up finished off to length this one's critical length wise I've taken some dimensions that I need to make this to so this one's a bit more important so we'll, we'll finish them off to length and then we've got some various patterns of holes to drill in these so I'll show you that as we're going along 
So we've got the first pattern of holes to go in here. I've got a central hole, clearance hole, and then four drilled and counterboard holes for four cap screws. So we'll just start with that now. Well, what I've done is I've had my edge finder in and I've picked up on this edge and the back edge datum edge and I've moved to my center point. So I'm, I'm bang over the center point of that pattern of holes at the minute. Alright guys, of all the setups you'll see on YouTube this week, this has to be a good contender for one of the worst. <laughs> I don't like doing this. And I'm cheating really, but only because I don't have the gear. I, I need an angle plate really for this or some other way of holding this. But at the end of the day, I'm just going to drill and tap two M5 holes in the end of here. You know, it's not ideal this, but it will be it will be okay for what we need to do. So we'll crack on and put those two holes in now. Right, that's that bit complete. So we've got the four holes drilled and counterboard for M5, central hole, and 
two holes drilled and tapped in that end. So that's the end of that. I, I've got a bit of machining to do. I'll have to take this corner off. But what I'm going to do is fit that to the round boss first and scribe that. And then we'll just... Yeah, we'll just... Um, probably hacksaw that. Or, uh, yeah, I'll do something with it just to take that off. So anyway, that's that bit complete. Moving on, got the next bit up in the vise. I've put my edge finder in, touched on this edge, touched on the back face, and I'm sat over my first hole position, so we'll start popping holes into, into this plate now. There we go, that's got the first setup done. So that's the four holes for the reader. And I've just got two more holes to drill and tap in the edge. So we'll just set up for that now. Hi well guys, apologies for that. Thought I'd got the camera running and the battery died. So I've put these two slots in. And they're what are going to interface with these two holes. So hopefully that all goes together like that to create the bridge these four holes that I've counterboard there this obviously goes the other way up like that so these four holes are for attaching to the bottom of the reader this creates the bridge I've slotted these holes so that I've got some movement in this direction and then obviously this pattern here is to attach to the the round boss that I've already made so we'll start heading towards assembling all of this now and see how it all goes together. Right, we're just starting to put all this together now. So you might wonder why I put this big hole in the centre here. And I did that for a reason. And you also might wonder why I chose four cap heads to hold this aluminium piece to the boss rather than just a cap like I've done on the x-axis. Obviously with just a cap I can't thread into anything because I've got a central hole through this boss anyway but also the big hole in there is so that I can get access right through to the cap head that holds this boss in position and that allows me the ability to be able to move this whole unit to square it up and what I've done is used a parallel off the bed of the machine onto the top, onto the top of this piece with some feelers underneath to make sure that we've got that absolutely square or as square as I possibly can to the axis of the machine so we know that we know that's square an issue I've got is as the bed comes back out as this V in here comes back out and it gets to the back of here there's a, a foul condition so I've got to take some material off that so I've set that up now we've scribed that on the back there we've marked our position so we'll get that back off and we'll just shape that aluminium piece to suit that's the first job and then we'll bring it all back and start fitting everything together well there we go guys that's got it all complete other than just tidying the cable cable work up so you can see I've shaped this aluminium piece here and I've just scribed around the radius of the boss bit of hacksaw and firework 
so that's all good and that now clears if I wind the x-axis over hopefully you'll see is that far enough? just about yeah so you can see there we've got the clearance on this corner now we've got clearance underneath so that all fits nicely we've got everything lined up got the cover plate on and I can absolutely tell you that putting the the grub screws not the grub screws the cap screws in under here into the bottom of this aluminium piece and also the four cap screws to go in the bottom here under the you know into the back of the reader um, produced some language that wouldn't even be suitable for a working men's club let alone YouTube um, <laughs> I've spent about two and a half hours faffing around anyway we got there in the end through a series of short down allen keys and bits and bobs the, the problem I've had really is this this lip on this base and just trying to physically get your hands in to do anything under there it's just so difficult but anyway we've got all that done we've plugged it in switched it on tested it everything's good it's all lighting up and moving as it should do so that pretty much concludes the fitting of the y-axis I've got a bit more work to do now in terms of just tidying all three you know, all three axis cables up and sort of just tidying the cable work up so they're not all trailing and hanging so I've got that to do but in terms of this particular series of videos that's about it I'll just zoom you up to the, the readout and we'll see all three working and then we'll close this series out so there we go guys X, Y and Z all functioning as they should on the DRO I have a bit of work to do to figure out all of the activities on here you know pitch circle holes that kind of thing it's quite useful as a calculator option so you can use this just as a calculator and then your final results you can store that straight into your any three axes there's PCD of holes there's various other functionality that I need to spend a bit of time looking into there is some different memory options so if you've got different datum systems on a part you can store separate datum systems in here and you've also got um, the absolute and incremental which again allow you to have a master datum and a subset of datums on one part so all very useful it's going to really expand the capabilities of the milling machine which I'm really really chuffed about so we need to spend a bit of time now learning it understanding it and using it so the last thing as I said I've got a bit of work to do just to tidy some of this cabling up just to make that all nice and neat I'm going to tie wrap things up and fasten them to arms just with enough slack so that everything still moves and that is the end of the DRO fit and that's gone on for quite some considerable time so I started probably around New Year with this and we're now in well in heading towards the middle of February but that being said I've not been spending as much time out here because of the weather and various things so so we'll call that a wrap so thank you all for watching thank you for subscribing as usual um, if you're not subscribed and you're watching and you like what you're seeing please consider subscribing to the channel to help me grow it and we'll catch you all very soon on the next video which will hopefully be back to the more projecty type work